The Great Falling Away Second Thessalonians 2 verse 1 to 3 Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Paul tells the Thessalonians not to allow anyone to deceive them concerning the day of the Lord. For him to make this statement, it suggests that some of the Christians at Thessalonica had fallen victim to an incorrect teaching, that the day of the Lord was already in progress. The Thessalonians were scared that the rapture had already taken place and that they were in the great tribulation. But here Paul told them, that they can know that they are not in the great tribulation because they have not yet seen the falling away that comes first. The ancient Greek wording for falling away indicates a rebellion or a departure, an apostasy. Apostasy is generally defined as a falling away, a withdrawal, a defection, in Christianity, apostasy is seen as a withdrawal from faith and trust in God. There is a debate among Bible scholars regarding this apostasy that is spoken of in 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3. The debate is centered around whether Paul is referring to an apostasy among those who once followed God, or an apostasy in the general world, in essence, a worldwide rebellion. There is evidence that supports both sides of the debate. I personally believe that Paul may have had both in mind because in scripture there is evidence for both. We see in 1 Timothy 4 verse 1 to 3 an apostasy of people who once believed. 1 Timothy 4 verse 1 to 3 now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. And in 2 Timothy 3 verse 1 to 5, we see an apostasy of the world in general. 2 Timothy 3 verse 1 to 5, This know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boosters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. 2 Peter 3 verse 1 to 3 Beloved, I now write to you this second epistle, in both of which I stir 
up your pure minds by way of reminder that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us the apostles of the Lord and Saviour knowing this first that scoffers will come in the last days walking according to their own lusts the entire second chapter of Peter chapter 3 from beginning to end is devoted to apostates and deserters and false teachers or deserters who became false teachers and the interesting thing is that they all come from within the church and not the outside in other words in the last days this is the voice of the religious world in the last days according to the scriptures there will be a falling away from historic biblical truth what we would refer to as historic Christianity the last days will be marked with a shift away from biblical truth and replacing that truth with doctrines of devils now let's look at three of the major doctrines of devils entering the church this is leading people towards the great falling away number one Jesus is not the Son of God sadly this kind of doctrine is gaining ground in Christianity and many Christians are okay with it any doctrine that says Jesus is not the Son of God is a false doctrine God clearly and audibly announced to Jesus as his son in Matthew 3 verse 17 and lo a voice from heaven saying this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased many people will say because Jesus has been existing for long before the time he came as a human he was just declared a son when he was on earth Jesus has been the Son of God since forever the psalmist explained what God said of his son in the Old Testament Psalm 2 verse 7 I will declare the decree the Lord hath said unto me thou art my son this day have I begotten thee the devil will never want us to proclaim Jesus as the Son of God he will always bring a doctrine that is against that fact we cannot allow this to encroach into the house of God we cannot allow the false prophets to take away the fact or the true doctrine of Christ and twist it the second one is that Jesus is not the only way to God some churches say that their pastors or priests or prophets are also ways to God when they want to pray they go to the priest and pray to God in the name of the priest now the Bible accepts that we pray for one another but praying the name of someone who is not Christ is not the doctrine of Christ some churches pray in the name of some people close to Jesus some churches pray in the name of the priest and now everyone is trying to take the place of Jesus which is not possible Jesus is the only way to God let us be clear of this today God doesn't recognize any other ways John 14 verse 6 Jesus saith unto him I am the way the truth and the life no man cometh unto the father but by me do you know what John 14 verse 6 tells me it tells me that Jesus is the way and if you want to meet God you have to go through Jesus you cannot bypass him you can't ignore him you can't remove him God did not give us any other names that we should use to come to him the Bible says in Philippians 2 verse 9 to 11 that wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus 
every knee should bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. God gave only one name, and that name is Jesus. That is the only name he recognizes. Jesus said in John 14 verse 6 that Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There are many doctrines that we need to cancel in the church today. The main doctrine that we must follow and we must preach is that Jesus is the Son of God. He became flesh to save mankind. He was killed and on the third day he resurrected. He is the only way and he alone will save us. In his name we pray to God. Anything that doesn't support this is from the devil. And number three, a lower view of the Bible as the Word of God. Not believing the Bible is the Word of God also means not believing in God himself. The Bible clearly stated in 2 Timothy 3 verse 16 that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. It was God who ordered the people to write what he told them. God inspired them to write. His spirit was in them and commanded them to write. If you read the Bible, you will see different places where God will tell his servants to write down what he is telling them. Habakkuk 2 verse 2 And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, and make it plain upon tables, that he may run that readeth it. Everything you see in the Bible, God ordered the people to write them. They wrote the scriptures under the influence of the Holy Spirit. If anyone does not believe in the Word of God, they do not believe in God.